Hello and welcome to From Dial Square to Where. We've got a uh, great guest today, we've got a lot to talk about. Um, just coming up to the end of the transfer window, had some news today on, on a transfer, an incoming one, so which you can talk about. So we'll, we've got uh, From Dial Square to Where Virgin today, so go easy on him guys, because Lee doesn't do many podcasts, so he might be a bit shy. So, <laughs> anyway, great to have you on board, Lee. Thanks nah, for coming nah, on. How nah, are nah, you? Nah, 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 looking forward, looking to, forward it. to it. Yeah, me too. Me too, mate. Ryan, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, uh, as a, as a, uh, we're not on air. Bit of a hectic week. It's, 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 it's all calm down, down now. now so. Yeah, no, absolutely. We were talking a little bit off air. We'll have to carry it on after the show, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and Glenn, how are you doing, Glenn? Glenn's joking. For those that, uh, Glenn, can you just unmute yourself? No, he's not muted. He's doing a really, really good the impression of one of those. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> that's it. Yes. <laughs> oh, we'll carry on. Right. So yeah, some news today. Then so we've got Pablo Marie on board. Which is good news. I, I mean, I don't know if you guys listen to anything that uh, Tim Vickery does, the South American uh, correspondent. It's a shame that he's a Spurs fan, but I actually quite like Tim Vickery. He's a good good guy. Trust a lot of what he says. And yeah, I put something on Twitter earlier on uh, that he was on the World Football phone-in on Friday. And um, someone sent in a question about um, Pablo Marie. And he was, uh, yeah, he was really glowing with praise for the guy. Um, I mean, Flamengo are no, um, are no mugs as a team. I mean, they run Liverpool pretty close, didn't they, in the uh, final of the the World Club Championship thing. So they gave a good account of themselves. And he said that um, during this rise of Flamengo, that he's one of the most, you know, uh, one of the most important part of the team. So he seems to fit the the type of defender that we really need. So, yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think, firstly, about this new signing? Well, well we, 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 need, we, need somebody. we need somebody. We need some, we need some defenders. defenders. So, uh, so, from, so that from that point of view, it's pretty good. Cool. I don't really I don't know really too, know much, too about much about him. But um, um, what, I've, what, what reports I've seen and what I've seen on, on YouTube, and that, YouTube and that, he looks, uh, he looks half decent, decent, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it's good age as well. And the best thing, I think, is that we've got what we wanted um, in terms of the deal. We got him on a loan with regards to uh, an option to buy in the summer rather than, you know, having to buy him. So, yeah, it's looking quite good as far as that's concerned. I looked, I just put, <laughs> literally whilst I was waiting to go uh, with the show to this evening, I put something on um, on Twitter. And it's um, uh, Pablo Marie what put uh, a, a sort of goodbye thing to to the Flamengo team and, and the fans and everything and it's translated it's quite thought it's quite funny it goes my thanks to the employees members of the technical committee companions and also to the entire rubro negra nation you will always be in my memory and my heart once Flamengo always Flamengo I will continue cheering for great achievements and vibrating with you gratitude <laughs> So I think it's very important for a player to always continue vibrating with the fans and the club. So <laughs> I thought that was quite funny anyway. But yeah, anyway, let's, at least we got off to a start. We've got someone in uh, that, that we needed. Um, I haven't actually heard today. Has any of you guys heard about the Mustafi injury? How long he's going to be out or anything? Has that been reported yet? I think it's a spray ankle. ankle. Does it, sorry, sorry, does, it does it say how long he's going to be out? Or no? I, th I mean, Lee, you were at the game obviously at the weekend, and um, you know everyone was cheering for uh, for him, wasn't they? And I thought that's quite nice, really, that um, they've given him some kind of respect for the way that he performed in the game. But what uh, what was the feeling like about Mustafi? Um, at Bournemouth, um, um, I've got a mech, I've got a mech, apparently, I've got, I've got an echo on my, my audio. audio. I've just seen, literally, just seen that. Is that, yeah, yeah. is that still the same? If anyone's listening, watching, can you uh, just put a note on, see whether that's still? Because I can't hear an echo myself. No, no. 
I can't so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, um, so um, listen, it's great, it's to, great see, to see um, Mustafi, Mustafi getting, getting some praise. Right. Right. To be honest, he's, 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 he's not a bad, he's not a bad defender. defender. He just, he just makes, mistakes makes mistakes every, mistakes every now and then, doesn't he? That's, that's, that's the trouble. trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and those mistakes are always very costly. So, um, but it's great to see the fans cheering him and everything like that. I was quite pleased with that. And, um, yeah, yeah, I think like, there's been a. I don't know about it, everyone else feels there seems to be a little bit more of a connection like with the fans and the players now. So I think the fans have been a little bit more forgiving since Arteta's come in. Like you know, uh, Granite Shaka seems to have uh, got back on ball and on, in favour with the fans, which is good to see. Um, and and it, what was great about going at the away games at the moment, the chanting the players' names. Um, you know, obviously Martinelli and, and Bellerin. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all good um, all good stuff. And the Steffi, you know, unbelievably started to play. Really, I thought he played really well on Monday and then he gets mm. injured. So, hopefully it isn't too bad. I've been reports are saying it's not too bad. So, Hello, everyone. Hope you're still there watching. But I don't know what's going on with this audio. So, please uh, accept my apologies. I hope we'll just crack on and see what we, can, uh, what we can do about it. So... <clears throat> anyway, we've had a quick chat about Pablo Marie. There's some weird links with us about that Southampton right back, uh, Ever um, Suarez. That's a bit odd to me. Can you? I, I can't understand why we're going with that. It, apparently, he can play left back or right back, but it's clearly for me. I don't know what you guys think, but it's not an area where we need strengthening at the moment. And make the Niles and Saka. Have been doing fantastic in my in my book uh, as back up to Tierney and Bellerin. So the links to that guy is are a bit odd. I mean, Ryan, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think we need anyone at uh, at right back or left back, or do you think that our resources could be better spent elsewhere? Same as me. The thing is, if I've got, got, got an injury, our injury list in our defence, I'd rather, defense, I'll, I'll rather, rather be, be safe than sorry. Because it would be like, like we don't go for no one, and Bellerin gets in, to make the Niles get injured, and we're stuck with no one, no one. We've got Tank for the rest of the season. Mustafa's out for three weeks, apparently. Tierney's coming back in March. Kalazanac is ill. It's just be our luck. If we don't do nothing, something else will happen, and we'll wreck the rest of our season. What the rest of it? Lee, what do you think? I don't feel that we need to um, sign somebody like that, to be honest. The, the one thing that worries me, someone told me today that um, if you sign, sign him, you can only have two loans playing or something, so we'd have to get rid of Tobias. So I don't want that to happen. I'd rather have Tobias staying than, than, than that. So I don't you know. There's, there's always these left field signings at the moment. I, what worries me about Arsenal is that they're always looking to. Cheap, cheap options, options and trying, trying to skim, skim think their way through it, loans and things, things like that. Like uh, you know, uh, uh, what I've what seen of him uh, uh, when he plays for Southampton, he's a decent, decent player. player. But, but do we really, you know, what happens to make the Knowles in? Make the Knowles have been playing really well. So I just don't understand why we'd do that unless you're going to put make the Knowles into the midfield and let Sabias go back. Maybe that's what's going to happen. But I'll be disappointed if Sabias says because I felt on. Uh, Monday, uh, Monday night, night he, when he came when he on, come he, on showed he showed us what what, what he can do, and do. that's the that's sort of a position that we we want someone doing in that middle of the field, field, you know. So I'll be disappointed, I'll be disappointed if, if that's the case. case. I'm exactly the same, Lee. I really, I've got just, I've always had a really good feeling about Sabias as a player. I've really taken to him. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that. I think under a lot of circumstances, I don't think a lot of our players can be judged until. Artes has started, and especially Sabios, because he wasn't used in the right positions, as we all know. And he got, obviously, uh, the injury. I, I just don't think he's had a chance to show what he can do. And he's only a young lad, and he's panicking, because he's been in part of the uh, the Spanish full team, national team, and he, he wants to go to the Euros. And he's panicking about not getting into the Spanish team yeah. for that, which is why he, he's made some noises about going back to Spain. But I really, really hope that um, he doesn't. I really want him to have a, a chance. And I don't... The, the only issue is whether he's 
worry about getting into the Spanish team has, has pissed off Arteta a little bit, whether that's caused an issue and he might doubt his commitment. But you, you put yourself back into the earlier part of the season. He was... Um, he looked like he'd been playing for Arsenal for years. He, he had so much of passion and enthusiasm. He's celebrating the goals even when he was on the bench and running onto the pitch and stuff. And, you know... I just really, really liked him. And if he goes, I'll, I'll feel a bit cheated, you know. I, I just wish that he could get a run in the team. It, it sort of leads me on to another one that he, I don't want to talk about him for too long, to be perfectly honest. But I've always wanted to give people a chance. And I've always been along the lines of you need to have a run in the team to get your fitness, get your sharpness, get your form. And that's what I said about um, Meza Ozil. I really wanted him to have that. He, he's had that now and he really hasn't, for me, justified uh, taking the place of someone else in the team. Now, he's, he just hasn't really done it for me. He's, he's still got no goals. He's still got no assists. And I don't think that um, he's someone that we really should persist with week in, week out. And um, Sobias hasn't had that chance. I'd love to him to have the chance now instead of uh, Mesut Ozil. I, I don't believe he plays in the right, the, the same role as Mesut Ozil. But he does really need a run in the team to show what he can do. And I, I, told, I, I think that you're the same, aren't you, Lee, with wanting that to see yeah, him? I, yeah, I, 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 am. I am. I am. I feel, I feel that, that, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, 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 exactly what you said. said. I think I that I'd like, like to see Tobias have that chance. chance. But the only but trouble with Tobias having that chance is he's on loan. So, so, you know, would you, know, you would give you that to Willock, who is a permanent player? player. Um, um, but, but, yeah, I yeah, think that's... Mesut Ozil's had four or five, four five, four five games, games now. He's done OK when he first got as a team, but the last couple of games he's gone back to where he was. And he hasn't been justifying his place in the team, if I'll be honest. So, you know, Sabah has come on on... I know it was only like 20 minutes... But, but he seems like, like a, a, an R-set of player to me that works, works very, very hard and gets on the ball and tries to make things happen. That's what we want Mesut Ozil to do, which he doesn't, doesn't, seem, to do. doesn't seem to do. But, but you know, come you know, Burnley, Burnley, I do I think that Ozil, Ozil will be playing. Be playing. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that, that that just doesn't ring true to me, playing away at Burnley. just It's just not Mesut Ozil, is it? It's a bit, uh, bit of a weird one, that, for me. Hmm. What do you think, Ryan? What, what's your thoughts on him? On you know, Tobias and Urzel, really. It's like you said, Urzel, if you've given that chance, he's had a run of games. He hasn't done, as he said, he ain't done nothing. Let's be honest, apart from the actual tracking back and defending more, what he's actually paid to do, he isn't really doing. If we're going to be brutally honest, whereas Tobias, I think we, we can, he, he can get all, we can get all that in one in him himself. I think what's Reassuring him, Arteta said, I don't want to rush him back. I don't, he's had an injury. I don't want to rush him back. I want to ease him back in. So hopefully that's, that's the case and it's nothing going off beyond the scenes that we don't know about. Because if I'm going to be honest, long term, I'd like to see somebody stay at Arsenal long term. I do. And I, he's got to have the opportunity to show what he can do to see whether we, we get the opportunity to buy him at the end of the season. I don't want to turn down that opportunity if he because imagine if he just he doesn't get that opportunity and he goes back to Madrid or goes somewhere else and shows what a quality player is I just really want to be in with a shout of um, of signing him because I think he could be, be a player that we really need um, for next season so I guess we'll have to wait and see really uh, how that turns out but <laughs> again something else I put on Twitter earlier on today I was listening to um, the Ask cast and uh, it's basically uh, someone stole my thunder because I I've been thinking for a couple of days, and <laughs> you know people are going to take this the wrong way. But um, my question to you is: Is Matteo Guendouzi the new Robbie Savage? <laughs> and, and, what, yeah. and what I mean by that is the the team that he plays for absolutely love him. Everyone else hates him. 
He winds people up on the pitch. He just winds up the fans, winds up the ref, winds up the other opposition players, doing these niggly little fouls, getting in their faces, kicking their ankles and getting away with it. And he's the sort of person that everyone loves to hate on the pitch. And But we love him because of it. Because of what he does. I mean, look, look at the rugby tackle he did against the, uh, was it Villa? I think that's, that's one of the best things I've seen for about for years on a football oh, yeah, pitch. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my question to you is, is he the new Robbie Savage? <laughs> <laughs> Lee? Just, 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 oh, no, that's, 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 that's a bit harsh on him, isn't it? I'm not, I'm been, not been talking out. about ability-wise. No, I know what I'm saying. Right. Straight. Listen, Listen, I've always, 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 been, always been told, if the crowd are getting on your back, the away the fans, get, or, or the, the opposition, opposition fans, fans say, say, get on your back, you're doing something right. right. So, so, as far as, as I'm concerned, long mate, like, 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 continue. I, I, I felt, felt he was absolutely outstanding against Bournemouth. They didn't like him for it. He was all over them. He was winning balls, spraying it about. You know, he's only young. I think he's... And listen, we need a little bit of that skullduggery in our team. We've not had it for a very, very long while. and We need it. Yeah. I think that's why we love him because he, yeah. he he's a he's a shit houser, isn't he? he that, and that's we've been missing that for so Need long. A few more of them. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And uh, he really does want people. I mean, he goes the other way. I mean, when we saw him against Watford, doing the, you know the old gestures and all that sort of stuff, but it's all part of the pantomime. He likes being the pantomime villain, doesn't he? I think he, he revels in it. And what he what he'd been missing all last season and the early part of this season, in my opinion was coaching. I don't think he'd been coached properly because he was allowed to do what the hell he wanted on the football pitch, running around, and everyone was calling him a headless chicken. But you can see week by week, he's he's getting more coaching and he's he's finding out, you know, he's getting more directions as to what to do on a pitch. And he's getting better and better, again, in my opinion. So I love him. And um, I think he's only... He seems to have grown since last season. Don't you think? Have you noticed? I think he seems a bit bigger. Yeah, and, and he's obviously only twenty, so he could probably be, still be grow, growing. I think he's. I think he has. I think he's, he's filled out a bit, and um, you know that'll be even better if he manages to do that. Um, and I, I think the same. You mentioned him earlier, Lee, just a, a minute ago. Willock, uh, he is another one. He was almost ruined under Unai Emery at the beginning of the season. I think. I mean, he got taken off at half time twice in two games, didn't he? Within a week, yeah. And um, weren't given a decent uh, crack of the whip. He was, he was another one, same as Sabios, who's played in different positions across the pitch. And um, I, I really enjoyed seeing him against Bournemouth. I think he was fantastic, and he hasn't got the skill or you know technical ability of Meza Özil, but what he misses in that, I think he gains in just his positivity and his, his enthusiasm and his running at defenders and no defenders in, in world football love to be run at that, that sort of pace and because it, it does make them even the best panic, doesn't he? And I love that about Willett. And I said, um, maybe not next season, but the season after that, when he's about 22, and if he, if he gets down the gym, really bulks up a bit, he could be our new, so not exactly the same speed, Tight, but he could be a sort of new midfield enforcer like a Vieira or a um, Abu Diaby, that type of player. I think he's got he's got it in him. He just needs the experience and to to bulk up a little bit because he's still a bit thin. It's not saying I'm not saying he's he's a weakling, but he's um, he, if he bulks up a bit, like I said, get gets a bit more muscle and a bit more experience and nous. I think he could be that type of player and. What I love about him as well is with his positivity is that he likes to have a shot. And I can't remember the last time that Mr. Ozil had a, actually had a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether either of you guys can. Oh, but yeah, Willock, another one. But we're starting to look like a, a real good quality team without actually having brought any players in yet under Arteta. I think it's a miracle, to be perfectly honest, what he's done within a, within a month. So, yeah. One last um, guy I want to have a quick chat about is, uh, I think he gets a lot of unfair criticism, is uh, Eddie, Eddie Nketiah. Mm. And he's got the endorsement of Ian Wright, and um, I see a lot of Ian Wright in him from, you know, uh, from a raw kid. Um, his ability in the box and finding space. I I'm really quite impressed with him. And he's, at the moment, I mean, he's had one... 
Apparently, I've just read actually on uh, on Twitter today that he's he's had nine shots playing for the first team and he scored four goals. And that ain't bad. That ain't really ain't a bad um, turnaround. He's a finisher. He's a goal poacher. And remember all those years ago, Arsene Wenger saying we needed a fox in the box. And he looked, we've actually got one in him, I think. Lacazette's not performing. He's working really hard for the team. He's doing exceptionally well. Um, trying to play his, his way through this bad form in front of goal. But at the end of the day, he's our number nine. And he has to score some goals. Well, he's not as good a player as, as Lacazette, clearly, at the moment. He's only 20. But at the moment, would you play him ahead of Lacazette just because of the goal situation, uh, Ryan? Yeah, actually, I actually would, because we're, we're, we're in the back end, the of, the back season, end of the season. Though. We've got, we've got to go into winter break as well, so I don't see why not. And because there's no, there's no say you can't be Lacazette off the bench, you can still have an impact. It just depends on your opponent. This is what I don't get with Leeds. They had Eddie. He was scoring he more was scoring goals more than Bamford, goals Bamford, and the, the, the manager preferred Bamford, Bamford for some, for some reason. reason. The fans, fans preferred Eddie. Eddie. They, loved they loved him. him. So, so, it's, it's, but I'm thankful because he's, he's back, back, back at home, home now, now, and he's scoring, he's scoring goals. goals. So, I, so, yeah, I would. Yeah, I so the thing is, I would. It doesn't mean that you have to do it permanently either. It no, could no. just be for a, you know, a run of a short run of games to give Lacazette a chance to, you know. Have a rest, to be perfectly yeah. honest. What do you think, Lee? Well, I'll be, I'll be, listen, I, I think, um, you know, it's, I think Eddie's one for the future. I don't think he's quite ready yet. I think that his movement's very, very good. Um, yes, he can nick a goal, but he's got to work on his hold-up play a lot better. Um, and for me, Lacazette, I just think um, it's, it's definitely... Uh, how can I, I say it? Like, say holds that the ball with more, more team players for us, like, you know. So, I'm, I, I, I don't I, think I, that. I'm very surprised, I'm very surprised that, that um, Lacazette didn't like play on uh, uh, Monday night uh, because I'm 99 percent sure that Abamian's going to come straight back in the side on Sunday against Burnley. So, where does that leave Lacazette and Eddie, really? Because I feel that the left hand side now is. It's done, done with uh, Martinelli. I think he's a shoeing. He's got to play every week. Pepe's getting better as it's going on. So I, I feel that that's the three that Arteta is going to go with. But definitely with, I would say, like 20 minutes to go from the end of games and all that when defences are tied, I, I think Eddie would be a good good one to come on. You know, he's got pace to burn. So... Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, starting I'm starting to fear for Lacazette Lacazette a little bit, like, you know, if I'll be honest. Um, yeah. What's going to happen with him? With him. But, it, I um, mean, it's not the longest goal drought in the world. I no, think it's, it's eight games, I think. He, he, he scored three goals in quick succession in December, didn't he? Um, he's always he's scored against the top teams, teams, Andrew. You know, yeah. if you look at his record, but his record away from home is poor compared to what it is at home. So... Listen, he'd have been chomping at the point to play against Bournemouth and get the chance that Eddie got, but he didn't. And I, you know, but our set does seem to like work work rate in front of a lot of other things. So he, I just can't see where he's going to play on on um, on Sunday if if Aubameyang is going to come straight back in. It'd be very interesting what he does. So unless he's going to give Martinelli a break, which I hope that he doesn't. But, um, but um, yeah, yeah, I do fear for, for Lacazette long term. But, you know, I think he's one goal away from coming back to form. You know, but listen, he, I thought against Chelsea was magnificent. His work rate and hold up play, getting bits and pieces is always difficult. And he was getting that. Um, so, very, very interesting. I'm, I'm really interested, actually, to see what... Um, what that team lineup will be on Sunday. I'm very interested to see where Arsenal is going to go because if you're going on players that deserve to play, then uh, Martinelli deserves his place. Pepe deserves his place. Um, so it's out of Lacazette or a Bamian for that top spot. And, you know, as you say, Ozil is going to be another one that would be interested to see if he comes in, in that position as well. So it'd be um, an interesting team selection on Sunday. 
yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing that as well. I think, um, I mean, can you imagine like uh, the lineup on, on some of the games that we've played recently? If that was named as a an Emery lineup with Saka at left back, Mustafi and um, you know, possibly Mustafi and um, Louise at, at centre half. And then you obviously you AMN at the back. We would have all shit ourselves, wouldn't we? <laughs> if, if under under Unai Emery, I think Twitter would have melted down. You know, having um, Saka at left back for, uh, a few weeks ago. But I can't imagine him not playing now. It's just it's it's just really odd, isn't it? He's, he's taken to it like a duck to water for an eighteen year old. It. I just I think it's fantastic. It's um, his attitude is incredible, uh, Saka. And his finish on Sat at the weekend was absolutely top notch. It reminded me um, of Anders Limpar when he scored on his debut. Do you remember the the Makita Trophy? It was I think it was a pre. I don't remember thing, that. Yeah. Do you remember he, he cut yeah. it from the left and he hit it with his left? He reminded me very much of that goal. And uh, yeah, I fell in love with Anders Limpar after that. That was fantastic. The super sweet. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But I'll, like you say, Martinelli just physically just can't be dropped. Uh, no, he can't Abam be. Aubameyang's got to come straight back in, isn't he? And um, I just think that Pepe is going to have to stay on the right hand side. Which leads uh, it'd me be to really Pepe. interesting, yeah, Sandra, because um, um, Arteta uh, has got a couple got of selection couple problems, problems there, and, and, and this is where you test, test, him test him out, out and, and this is where he's got to be ruthless. Um, mm. He could actually he could play Lacazette in behind. You know, but that means yeah. leaving out Ozil. So there's loads of options that he can do. Um, and let's see. This I think this is his first test really of um, of how he manages Arsenal because when you manage a club like Arsenal, you're going to have a lot of um, players vying for places. And I will be very, very disappointed if he said I'm leaving uh, Martinelli out because he's young and whatever. We've got. Um, uh, a, winter a winter break, break after, after this. this. He's been our best yeah, player, best so player. there's no need no to need rest to anybody, anybody, you know, because they can have the rest the, the following rest week in the uh, in the winter, winter break. break. So, so this, this is, going is going to be an interesting, interesting scenario, scenario for um, uh, Arteta, because, because if he does leave a Bamiang out, he's been out for about four, three weeks or two weeks, is it? And then he's going to be out for another two weeks because of this winter break. So he's not going to come back looking great, is he? So I think that he needs a game. So it's going to be really interesting, I think. Yes, I know. Uh, he said, my, above all else, really, everyone's got a clean slate when he came in and joined the club. And um, he's going to pick players on their performance on the training pitch and on their form. And um, I, if, he, if he sticks to that, which I think he is, a, he, he, I don't think he's a mug, he, I don't think he's going to take any falls, then he can't, what, he can't physically play Mesut Ozil, really, in my opinion. Well, it, it, could... exactly. Well, if he's going to drop, if he's going to drop a Lacazette because he's he's uh, not scoring goals, that's fair enough. You know what I mean? Um, but but Lacazette is working hard, and people will turn around and say that that's not you know he's there to score goals. So um, work rate it should be there anyway. So I get that. So uh, if you're going to do that with Lacazette, then Ozil's not creating any chances and he's not scoring no goals and he's not working hard. So how does he stay in the team and, and somebody else doesn't? So that's the, that is the conundrum that they've got. And it'd be very, very interesting to see Mesut Ozil. But I'll tell you, I'm not, if I was a better man, I'm not. But if I was, I'd be putting a lot of money on that Mesut Ozil will start on uh, Sunday. Mm. Well, I'm talking about betting, Lee. I don't know if you saw it on, on Twitter. I put... I was, um, cool. I must have, I had a bit of a crazy moment, but I put a tenner on Arsenal to finish in the top four at 33 to one. And I could see that. I thought you was mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am. I am mad. I'm just putting, in, I've just got a lot of faith in us finishing the season really strong. You know, last season, when um, Brendan Rodgers took over Leicester, they were, they were appalling and under that um, Puel. Yeah, and, uh, he took yeah. over in February, and they went on a, a really good run towards the end of the season, pretty much winning most games. I, I can see us doing that uh, towards the end of the season. It's a massively long shot. We think we've got eleven points to make up, but um, oh, yeah. it's only. I, I think if, 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 if 
if we if we'd have beaten Chelsea. I think maybe there could have been an outside chance because obviously Chelsea have got Leicester this weekend, Tottenham have got Man City, so we could have gained some more points. But I think that, you know, 10 points, giving Chelsea 10 point lead at this stage of the season and Leicester. Mind you, Leicester are seeming they could actually cut their, their season starting to come off the rails at the moment. So, yeah, I, I think. the best run, have they? No, it hasn't, like, you know. So, it, listen, every, while their points are available, it's still it's still there. But I still think we're not quite strong enough defensively to be able to uh, think about that. I, I, what I was, I mean, I, I completely admit, I hold my hands up, that I, I was completely and utterly dreaming when I put that on. But <laughs> <laughs> you never know, dear. I, I think that, personally, and I, I hate to say this, but I think we've got more chance of that than winning the Europa because of the... The quality of the team, yeah. yeah. The well, I don't think we're going to do. I don't, I don't think, think we'll win, win the Europa, Europa League. League. No, no. I'm, no I'm with you on that. People talking about it is if because we got to the final last year in the semi-final the year before. People are talking about it if, if, as if it's going to be a piece of piss. But I can't. I mean, there's a lot of good teams in that this year. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I mean, you never know with the FA Cup though. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Hmm. Um, maybe to go on a good cup run. But yeah, I, I think that um, I wouldn't be surprised though at the weekend either if it's Lacazette, Aubameyang and Pepe again up front either. Um, I, I think there'd be a bit of upset if, if Martinelli got dropped but um, we'll have to see. I'm with you Lee, I'm really interested to see what his, uh, his team selection is going to be but on form and um, I think you, you have to drop Ozil and put in Willock or well yeah probably okay. Willock because he's had a bit more of a run out than uh, Sabayos but I'd be happy with Sabayas as well in a midfield three, personally. So we'll have to wait and see. But um, regarding the, the, the game, that what has to be sort of noticed, and I think going back to my sort of era of following Arsenal as well, back in the 80s and the, and the 90s, I was, just, I was so happy when we had out a core of English players. And a lot of the players were getting into the England team. And it all grown up together, you know, and we're getting that kind of feeling with again back with the the squad with all these uh, academy players coming through, and it could be one of those moments because I can't see any of these uh, current crop. I mean, I don't know about the ones that have gone out on loan, um, like Smith Rowe and so on, but I can't see any of the ones that are playing at the moment not being a part of the squad. I can't see them not being good enough. Uh, personally, because I don't think every single player that comes out of the academy has to be a world-class world-beater. They just have to have a part in it to play in the team, in the squad. Um, you know, look at Sheffield United, who all play together as a team and, a, and as a squad. Not, they, they've got no superstars, but they all they all know their job and they all do it really well. And I, I can see that Arteta's building that kind of uh, team mentality. And it would be so nice to actually have a few players that qualify to play for England that come through the academy mm. back playing for Arsenal again for the first time since, you know, the 80s and 90s when you had the Michael Thomas and Paul Davis and David Rocastle and Paul Merson and, and so forth. But do you get that kind of feeling sort of harking back to wanting that sort of time again, uh, Lee, as well, yourself? Um, sort of, well, yeah, yeah. And you get that sort of feeling, maybe that's potentially it could be around the corner again. Great point. Um, I've lost, I've lost interest in England, England uh, because I have. Yeah. we don't have any English players playing for us. It's all Spurs players. So. As well. Yeah, so I don't, um, I don't enjoy watching England play. So it would be nice to see us have a few English players. We've got like some, some good ones coming through. You know, Sacco, I think, has got every chance of becoming an England international. Um, uh, certainly, certainly Willick has, has as, as, well. as well. Um, we've got some good, you know, whether they can, they can push forward on, on that, I don't know, but definitely, uh, uh, Saka looks like very much like uh, the, the, uh, a player that could go and play things, even at left back. I, I was saying the other day, I think you've got um, uh, Chilwell, and other than that, not really that many great left backs in the world in, in the country. So he could really get a good chance and, and, and push himself into the England squad. It, there's always someone that comes from nowhere as well in these squads, isn't there? So I'd like to see it. If you, you've got um, 
Smith Rowe at um, Huddersfield now doing his bits here. I think he's a good player, whether he can break through into this Arsenal team. It's not easy getting into the Arsenal team from, from the youth anyway. You've, you've got to be a special person to do it, but you, you've got to have a little bit of luck. The opportunities have got to come. And the, the good thing is that these guys are getting opportunities. You know, I thought Callum Chambers was doing fantastically well until he got injured, but there's never, ever been a mention of him playing for England. You know, Rob Holding was doing really well. Unfortunately, another one that's got injured. So luck plays a big part in these uh, decisions as well so hopefully Saka can keep himself injury free and we can have someone to 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 uh, follow in the England team yeah I I, th I think that uh, there's a player in um, Rob Holding I think he's he looks like a really good cultured defender and I think he just needs a good run um, to get his fitness back as well um, trouble is he's getting it um, I and mean, we are down to the bare bones, and obviously we've got the guy that's just come in now. He should be fairly match fit. I think he's he's been carrying on sort of playing, but time will tell how quickly he gets put into the team. This uh, Pablo Marie, so or Mori, whatever, however you pronounce it. But we could really do with um, a good fit, Rob Holding. But I I like him. Again, he's another one that a lot of the fans are really sort of getting on his back saying he's just not good enough get rid of him bin him out it's it's just so hard to come back from a, an injury like that without getting a run of games and he ain't getting those run of games no. so when he gets dropped back in the team just out of necessity people are just judging him straight away you know without actually getting any kind of match fitness i think it's so you know it's unfair on him and uh, i think he's definitely a, a player that we need to keep hold of but we can't afford to put him out on, on loan until uh, the end of the season because if we did, we'd, we'd be back to having only three fit central defenders again. So um, it's going to be tough on him. But I think next season, we'll hopefully see the best of him again after a, a full pre-season under Arteta. Fingers crossed. Um, now, let me just quickly check this one other thing. Now, Ryan, as well, I haven't got sort of gone to you on the uh, the whole subject of like the the academy out of the academy i mean what cause I, like i said i think all the players that have got a really good chance of actually making it at arsenal that are coming through that are playing at the moment arteta obviously sees an awful lot in reese nelson you can just tell straight away and the the work he's done with some of the players over at man man city looks really promising i mean what are your thoughts on the the current crop and do you think that they could be the type of players that really sort of could grow together within the, within the squad? Or can you see any of them that you don't really hold out much hope for? Well, first of all, I'm actually, as a younger, as a younger Arsenal, Arsenal fan, fan, actually excited, excited to see, to see so, so many, many of our youth products product coming through the system, the system at the same time, time together, together, build a bond, they can build a bond together. together. And yeah, yeah, I can't see can't any see of them any really, really not having given, given the chance of taking it. Because so far, so everyone's been taken, taken even, especially, especially under Arteta. I mean, Reese Nelson, Nelson, he didn't have the best, 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 best of starts best of this season, in and out, in and out, in and out got injured. He's finishing, he's, yeah, he's got to improve, but he's young. He's got to give, got to give the kids, kids a chance, chance, but they're taking their opportunities. It's up, if we went for Reese in, in the third round against Leeds, we'd be, yeah, we would we have to go to a replay and actually turn up at an end and like Logan Clock. Um... It's just, it is fantastic because this is what I've been saying last season. We need to adapt to sort of a philosophy, a method of using our youth and bringing in the right players. Not not, not players from abroad. It doesn't have to be the big names that big you are. Look at Liverpool uh, on the clock. Um, in one one window, books up Southampton, Mane, Van Elden, who's just been relegated to Newcastle. Uh, who else is it? There's a lot of, got quite a chunk of players at a struggling club, and he brought them on. Look what they are now. And mm. I think if we can mix a bit of that with the oh, sort of IX philosophy of youth, you, what, 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 what could go wrong? As long as you get the right balance, right? right? The thing is, if they make mistakes, they make mistakes because they're young and they're inconsistent. Exactly. But they need to be allowed to make those mistakes um, to learn because you're only going to learn from them, aren't you? Worst case scenario is if we played them and they've got a lot of first-team experience playing for the Arsenal, 
then they're going to be worth more money anyway if they don't make it. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's a harsh world. If they don't make the, the grade and we have to sell them, we have to sell them. But by playing them in the first team, their value is only going to go up. You know, don't want to be sound cynical or anything, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? Um, talk, quickly dropping on to Pepe, I think he's uh, the one, again, that's just getting a lot of... Uh, a lot of stick. I've got a lot of time for the, the kid. And if you can't spot that he's got talent, and you don't know what talent is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think you, you've got to be able to see it. And he, I think that um, when Arteta said everyone's got a clean slate, I think we should all have that kind of opinion with with a lot of these players. Um, giving them a clean slate from when Arteta started, because... It was such a shambles under our Emery. I've never known anything like it, and um, I think he he needs some time to adapt. But he's, I think he's doing all right, and I think a lot of his hard work's going un, unnoticed as well. I don't know if you you at the games, uh, Lee, when you actually there, are you actually able to notice like the work that that Pepe? I don't know if you've sort of studied him at all. That he he's doing an awful lot of tracking back as well, and I think. A big part of his job is to cause chaos in in the opposition defence with his running and and scaring them and so on. And I think he's doing an awful lot of that, really, personally. Uh, Listen, I think he's tra tracking back. What do you what do you think? I think I he's impressed in the last few games. games. I, I'll, I'll be honest. Know, since our settles come, come, there has been, been like a lot of them has improved. improved. I think I that think, um, yeah, um, oh, before, before Christmas, Christmas it, I thought he was like poor, very poor. But he, he, he had that breakthrough game against West Ham just before Christmas when he scored. Uh, played really well there. And I think it's just confidence in him. And listen, when you're playing in the French League and you're, you're turning people inside out, it's a lot easier than what it is probably in the Premier League. But I think they're just slightly seeing signs of him now getting better. And I'm, I'm not too convinced whether he's a right winger. I would maybe look him to play on the left, but then you've got Martinelli playing there. But, but he seems to, every time he goes, goes out wide, goes, goes out to go round the back, he cuts, he cuts inside. inside. But he does it really well. Um, um, I've got great, great skills. And, and I, 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 I agree with you. I think his work rate has improved. Has improved. Um, mm. and, I and I think that's because, because Arteta demands, demands it. it. Mm. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, um, you know, he's buying into it. So I'm quite pleased with what he's done. I've been very impressed in the last few games. I've seen signs that we've got a very, very good player on our hands. Yeah, I think so. I, I I can't help but think he needs to be given a sort of a free reign across the front. Yeah, mm. I, I wouldn't I be. A, you shouldn't wouldn't say be like, you're out on the right hand side. You need to stay out on the right hand side. That's the thing with Pepe. I think we need to. You know, we've got a fantastic relationship between Martinelli and, and Saka on the left. I think on the right hand side, you should just say to Pepe, just fucking do what you want, mate. Because <laughs> I think by doing that no one's going to be able to mark him or pick him up or know what the hell he's going to do. And I've mentioned on a couple of podcasts in the, in the past, he reminds me, not in, in so much as playing style, but he reminds me an awful lot of Carnu. Uh, because I used to love watching Carnu play and he never knew what he was going to do. And he was, he was all limbs, wasn't he? And I don't think he knew what he was going to do himself most of the time. And I think similar with, with Pepe, he's got a sort of a... A sort of a languid sort of style about him, but he's he's just incredibly skillful. So I think yeah, under Arteta, I'm not sure where that would ever work, but I, I'd like him sort of to be roaming around the front area of the pitch, just doing what the hell he wants, really, and causing chaos. And I think he could really open up doing that because he, I don't want him to become too predictable, just playing on the right all the time, cutting in, cutting in, cutting in, and mm, being easy point. to read. Yeah, so... I'm, uh, I've got a lot of high hopes for him, but I think I do think a lot of it's going unnoticed. And I hate it right, when um, it just every time you mention his name, it, you always have to say, "Oh, seventy-two million quid." You know, you know, seventy-two million quid. It's not seventy-two million quid's worth. And probably, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. That's really frustrating because it's not his fault. He was seventy-two million quid, and uh, he just needs to, to some time to settle in personally. Mm. Um. <sighs> Bellerin um, is one that I, I, I'm going to have to re retract something I said a few weeks ago because I said if we got a, a big offer for him in the summer, um, I'd be happy to take it. That's what I said a few weeks ago. 
I mean, it's early days from the following his, his comeback, but I think I'm going to retract that completely. I don't want him to go <laughs> because I, I really like the guy. Uh, and I've forgotten, to be perfectly honest, quite how much I do like him. And what's more important, I think, is how important he is to the club and the, and the team. I think he's a, a massive a massive personality for the team and he, he represents the club fantastically. I loved it when he said, um, what did he say after the match? Oh, I love scoring against that lot. <laughs> against when he was Chelsea. I love the way he said that in his sort of uh, Spockney accent, Spanish and Cockney. But uh, I, I think he's actually a very important player. And I, I, I have to hold my hands up and, and say that over the last year or so, I, I've almost, almost sort of forgotten quite how good he was because that performance he put in against Chelsea and he, he, he did it again. I wasn't expecting him to play against Bournemouth and all, but he did. He had a good game against Bournemouth. But against Chelsea, I think he put everything into that match. Real load of heart and soul and effort. And for him to keep going the whole match and score it in the, the way he did, I think it was a, a great performance. A probably man in a match, really. Uh, overshadowed by Martinelli's goal, obviously, but um, I think he, he, he put in a fantastic uh, performance. I think he's, people were saying only a couple of weeks ago that Bellerin's going to have trouble getting back into the team because of the form of AMN. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what did you think, Ryan, about, you know, Bellerin's comeback? Pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. I was... I'll be honest, I was concerned when I saw on the line against Chelsea, but that's due to the fact that he's just come back from an injury. Even though he's been on the bench for a couple of games, it's still this is a big game away from home. <sighs> With um, fitness and all that, if anything weren't right, if, if you know our fan base, they'll be on him. Yeah. But to a man, they, to, they were brilliant, especially him. And he's carried that on, and hopefully he can carry it on a bit more, get a bit of, bit of a run together now, and hopefully touch wood. Same as you Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. What about you, Lee? What, what, obviously, the, the atmosphere, I really, really, really envy you being in that Chelsea <laughs> that Chelsea match. It seemed incredible. It was, it absolutely, was absolutely unbelievable. 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 Best uh, atmosphere, atmosphere I've been in for a very, very long very time away from home. It was brilliant, brilliant from start, start to finish. To finish. And um, the, the, the players, players responded to it as well. As well. Mm. The players responded to it and... I think I we think both, both, the fans, the fans fed, fed off the players, players and the players, players fed off the fans. fans. I really, I really do believe, believe that, you know, it was, it was great. Listen, it was a great, great atmosphere, atmosphere in Bournemouth, Bournemouth but, it but it weren't as good as it was at Chelsea. Chelsea. It was something, it was something special, special in there, to be honest. And, and, um, and Bellerin on the day was absolutely outstanding. He made a tackle in the first minute on their left back that said, I'm here to get them to put it on you. And he just playing, playing. And then the fantastic goal to end it off. And what was really surprised, I was very, very surprised that he played against Bournemouth. I thought he might have been rested for that one, but he came back and played another good game on um, on Monday. So, uh, and, and I have to say, very, very harsh on Mike Niles because he'd played really well in the games before that. So, you know, Bellerin to me is uh, an asset for us. He, he, I love the way he gets forward, he bombs forward, he's got quality, but he can defend as well. So, and, and I, I think, think you're you spot on what you said there about his, his, leadership his leadership qualities are very, very much surprised me. I didn't, I didn't think I would see that, see that but he's, he seems he's like a real leader and a leader of the team as well. So, so he ticks all the boxes, boxes, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. And he really, rep like I said, he represents the club really well. Mm. And um, actually, just going, it just made me think of something, just going off tangent a little bit, just the small things that Arteta has brought back as well about the club. What I do love as well is that He's got all the players to start to wear their suits again when walking back, you know, walking into the ground. And I don't know, I, I, I really like seeing that. And I used to love that back in the day under George Graham and everyone was wearing their suits. Obviously, they're not wearing their ties or anything anymore, but um, I think it's probably pushing it. And they still probably wear their headphones. But I do like it when they walk into a ground and they're wearing their, their Arsenal suits. I think it looks smart. I'm going to go through some of the um, the comments here because there's been some really good conversations going on. Um, Stan, Stan the man, the groover from Vancouver. Thanks for watching, Stan. He's put, I, I don't think Eddie will make it at Arsenal. In two years' time, we would have brought another striker instead of promoting from within, in my opinion. I really hope not. I really hope you're wrong there, Stan. I... 
I do see an awful lot of um, Ian Wright in, in him. And I think Ian Wright sees a lot of Ian Wright in him, finishing wise. Um, he's, like I said, he's taking him under his wing out of his own. Uh, you know, it just sort of, I think they started chatting on Twitter and it went from there, didn't they? But he's keep, be giving him a lot of tips and training, coaching. Glenn, sorry to see you gone. Glenn, he's obviously can't. He's not technically minded at all, bless him. He put, <laughs> sorry, I'm too old to figure out what was wrong. If my wife was not crawling up my ass about driving my kid to college, I would have kept trying. Really sad I missed you, Lee. You're one of my five, one of my top five, ten. Oh, I can't remember what that bit out. Sad I missed you, Lee. You are five of my top ten AFC voices. So you're five of them. Oh, very, nice, very nice, Glenn. Very nice. Oh, really? I think he's probably joking about your echo, maybe. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we Tony, if Chambers didn't get injured, I would have loaned him out this window. Mm, that's a bit odd. He was playing really well, I think, when he got injured. I don't know, he was playing pretty much every week, Tony. I don't I quite understand that one, why you would loan him out. Maybe you're thinking about holding? I don't know. Um, regarding the... Europa League, Ryan, mm. ask brothers Ryan. Thank you, thank you, Ryan, for watching as well. Ajax lost players. Wolves, we should beat. Inter is the only scary team. Last year was Napoli, Chelsea, Sevilla, Frankfurt. It was a lot better than the current line. Salzburg was good too. I suppose so. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it might just be Napoli and Ajax. I mean, Ajax only lost a couple of their main players. I think it's still a very good team. Mm. Do scare me a bit. Inter under Conte. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Um, let's put a few more of the other ones. Um, Stan again. Having a left footed right winger means there will never be crosses being fired in from that side. Mikel needs to encourage Pepe to use his right foot. I wouldn't say he doesn't encourage him, but he, I mean, the, the cross he put in. I think that was against, uh, was that the Bournemouth game where Pepe put a right footed cross in and Martinelli hit it on the volley with his left? Or was that the Chelsea game? But anyway, it was either either way, whatever, whatever game it was in, that was a great cross with his right. Um, talking about moving Pepe to the middle, I think Pepe will be terrible in the middle, thinks Stan. It's worth a try. I do think he'd be worth a try. I think it works to a lot of his strengths, um, at being able to run at, at players rather than just having to cut in. It. He's not going out on the right uh, around players, is he, though, Lee? Uh, Pepe. He's uh, not he going can, around the he outside. Can beat, and, beat, he can beat a man for fun, fun, but, but he, he chooses he not to, doesn't he? He chooses, he chooses not to go around, around that side. side. But um, it's Because it's not using his right... His, his no, he was... I don't, I don't think he's got, he's got the confidence on his right foot, right you know, so, uh, so uh, that'd, that'd be a very, very interesting, interesting one, what, what they're going to do with that there, because, because you, you, you know, you, know, you did right there, right you, you do need crosses, crosses coming over from the the, 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 the right, right, and also the, 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 the good defenders will suss out that Pepe is always going to cut inside. Exactly, too predictable. So, yeah, it'll be starting to become predictable. That's why I think they should either swap regularly, Swap wings or just give Pepe the free reign um, because uh, I think that um, it just makes sense. His burst of speed is perfect for wing play. If he could switch flanks every now and then and put crosses in uh, from the left, that would be a great asset. Uh, that's what we've been talking about. Just have a bit more, I don't know, Please. surprise about him. I think that would be uh, a real um, incredible tool against mm. uh, a lot point. of our opposition. I think it really would. Um Another one here, which I was going to read out. Uh, where's it gone? Um, Tony Turner again. It's, it's when you were talking about holding. I said I would like to loan him out if Chambers didn't get injured. All oh, right, okay. So he was talking about holding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I think that holding probably does need to go out. But the trouble yeah, is, I think, the now, I think that the problem we've had is. The Mustafi injury, it, it's its pretty much put any kind of kibosh on, on sending him out on loan. That's the problem. Um, because we'd just be too short now. We'd just be too short without him. Because we'd be literally down to, what, Louise, Socrates and 
Uh, holding out. The new guy. You know, if we sent holding out. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't send, send holding, holding out online. Can't, can't do it. No, because we've, we've lost him. Uh, yeah, we've lost him. But anyway, uh, Ryan McMurray, lastly, just at the moment, I think Pepe would cause some serious chaos in the middle. He just can't lose the ball. I, I think exactly the same. I think he, he, he really is excellent on the ball. He just really is. And in the last game against um, Bournemouth, when he, he He's literally spanned two players and he just put, a, just put a shot into the side netting. But imagine if that had gone in. That would be like the almost, not quite as good, but almost Dennis Bergkamp against Newcastle type of of spin. Do you, remember, do you know which one I was yeah, on yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. That was an yeah, incredible bit of skill, that was. Yeah. Right, I'm going to just um, sort of start to finish off. I want to talk a little bit about, if you're all right for just five more minutes, guys. Next mm. season... You mentioned as well, Lee, about um, you mentioned the word being being ruthless, Mikel Arteta being ruthless. It, just say now it was the end of the season, and he's had his chance to have a look at the players. As things stand, this is the squad, and he's got to work out what to do, sort of moving forward. He's got to make some decisions on because oh, we've got quite a big squad actually. He's got to make some decisions about which players is uh, are going to be surplus to requirements. Uh, like I say, it's a bit premature because we've got, you know, still got a few games coming up. But if you were him now, and you had to be ruthless and move some players on, going through like the main sort of starting players, who would you say would be the ones oh, so, to get so, rid of immediately? Two so cent, oh, straight away. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna challenge or do anything there, you've got to have a strong back for. And, and basically, basically Socrates, Socrates and Louise, Louise are not good enough. Even they though they've both played really play well at this moment in time, time still, still not the standard, standard it's going to be winning you and, and or challenging you for titles. For titles. Mm. Um, I would I keep Bellerin and, and Saka as, as, as full-backs. What about Tierney? Or, or Tierney as well. And I think that you've got to be... I think we need a real box-to-box player in midfield. So I would... Probably, probably sacrifice, sacrifice someone, someone like Shaka if you can get, get the money, money for, him. for him. And, and I would, I would yeah, yeah uh, probably like Lacazette, like I would sacrifice, or would sacrifice get, get big money, money for him. For him. Um, and, and that and would that give us some funds, funds to buy to buy, buy players. Mm. And one, one of the players I would go and break the bank for is Jack Grealish. I'd go and get him from Aston Villa. I'd even go as far as to get Tyrone Mings as well from Philly if they get relegated. So we've got a big, powerful centre half. The core from Watford and a wide player of some ilk. I still think we need that wide player. Someone like Saha. Okay. Okay, interesting. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, pretty much the same. Lee was saying Socrates definitely is Draco. Lacazette at the moment time yeah, he's doing, yeah hard, he's doing all the hard work, but it's just goals. We need it for goals, but he's not guiding them. So. Isn't it weird, though, just to cut in just one, just quickly, isn't it weird, though, that Lacazette was our player of the year last season, voted for by the supporters? Mm. He doesn't yeah. seem to be getting much support anymore at the moment, does he? Yeah, oh, no, he's getting, he's getting the support. The fans are giving him good, good support. support. He's, he's still getting, getting his name sung and everything like that. But I just feel that... You know, if you, know, you can get, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, about if you get big money, money for him, for him. I, think I think we could, we could use that in other areas. areas. He's uh, at the end of the day, he's a work, really hard working, etc., 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 but he's our number nine and he's got to be there to score goals, surely. Mm. He's, he's going to end up, in yeah. fact, I saw, a, I saw a comment earlier on. I can't, sorry, without scrolling back up, one of you guys put, he's going to end up being another Emil Heskey, a hard working sort of a battler. But with no goals, and we don't want that. So sorry, carry on, Ryan. Yeah, so I also throw Erzon in in, in the bag, bag as well, just because he ain't he ain't doing what we need him to do. Yeah, he's tracking back. Yeah, he's putting more work in defensively, but he's not doing what he's paid to do in an attacking sense and provide assists and goals. The problem is, we ain't gonna go. He's gonna be there until the end of his contract. Yeah, exactly. We know that. It's we ain't gonna get rid of him, and. I don't know what to do with the guy, but if we could get rid of him on loan or something. Trouble is, Urza would have to agree to 
go out on loan or leave the club, and he ain't going to do that. No, he ain't going to no. do that. Simple as. So we're stuck. We're stuck with, stuck him. with him for another, another year. year. Yeah, exactly. There's a good, good shout in the comments from Stan about uh, Van der Beek. Yeah. One of the signings. I was calling from last summer. I think he'll be cracking the fox 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 play for us. Absolutely, and I like that Hakim Ziyech as well. Mm. I'd love to have got him last summer, and apparently we could we could have got him for thirty five million. Like that, yeah, yeah. Steel, steel. But I, I'm totally with you, uh, Lee, regarding Jack Grealish. That'd be perfect for us. And um, who was it said uh, we should? I mean, in this day and age, the number ten role. Yeah, you know, here we are, Stan. Uh, do you think we should bin the number 10 role and go with two box to box eights with a DM in midfield? And I think that, yeah, I think it's right there. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's exactly what I would do. But, um, Grealish is, is exactly the type of player that we would like. Yeah, does it all? Premiership like experience. experience. I just wish we could fast forward time for a season because I, I honestly think that given the right guidance and coaching, Willett could do that role. Yeah, yeah, he's got the potential. I think he could. I think he just carries the ball, um, and he could just he can put stick one in the top corner whenever you know when we need him to. But um, unfortunately, we can't uh, we can't fast forward the time. But I think in a couple of years' time, we've got a special player there. Um, but we need to be. I do think we need to be ruthless. I think. We possibly need a number, a second choice goalkeeper. I think we can do. I, th- I don't know. I'm really not ca- happy with Martinez. I think he's a bit. At 27 years old, I think he, he hasn't. He's only had 20, 20 odd games in in first team football. I've I've read at the age of 27. Not his fault. I don't know he's been out on loan, but um, he doesn't fill me with confidence. He's he's had some really good games, but he's a. I think against Bournemouth the other day, he, he spilled a couple of easy mm. ones which could have easily fallen to the feet of uh, one of their players. And I'm, So I could probably uh, do with, say we could do with that. I'm not too bothered about the full-backs personally. I think that we should, I think personally as well, that we should hold on to Louise for one more year because of his leadership ability and his, his ability to bring on the young players that we've got coming in as well. Just... So I was just, well, thinking, I was just as thinking as well, as well with our link to this guy from Southampton, do you think that you know, indicated to uh, us that uh, uh, AZ is going to be more central? Our sense will give more of a chance at central, maybe. I just can't see it. If we're bringing the right back in. I really can't see it. I can't see it. I can sort of think of him explaining it. To give him an extra chance in his preferred role. That's like, again, I, I, I don't know why else we go for another right back. We've got two right backs as we, as we speak. That's right. it, it, it does seem odd. It really does. Um, Matt Macy says Ryan McMurray. I think he. I don't know enough, but I haven't seen him play enough. But maybe worth giving him a shout. Apparently, he's a giant. He's like six foot seven, isn't he? Matt Macy, yeah, our third choice mm-hmm. goalkeeper. But I haven't seen him play enough. But maybe worth giving him a shot. I'm not against that. But with regards to um, the centre backs, I will keep. I will definitely get rid of Socrates. I do like the guy in his attitude, but he makes a lot of errors. I don't think he's not good enough. I really, I've never thought he was good enough. Louise clearly has made mistakes as well, but I think his leadership qualities will be invaluable next year, especially when we've got uh, Saliba coming in. Hopefully, you never know if we're if we're really lucky, we might get that open. Makano, who's also young, I think he's. Uh, we, he'd be missed. We, we haven't got enough leaders in the dressing room, and I think it'd be great to have him around just for one more year. Louise, I think he could still do a job when necessary in the team. Uh, so I, I personally would keep him. I would get rid of... Um... Do you know what? Depending on the funds, and I know we ain't going to be able to afford it, but in an ideal world, I would like to pay off Ozil and just get rid of him in the summer because he ain't going to choose to go. He ain't going to agree to go. But I'd like to pay him off so he has to go. Personally, because we need to move on from him, and he's really holding us back. I oh, personally, well, so it's crazy. I think it would be what, uh, maybe fifty? Is it fifteen million? He's on a year, or something around there. Yeah. I think it might actually be thirteen million. We have to pay him off. 
But 13 or 15, either way, I think it's worth it personally because we need to move on from the guy. Xhaka, he's been brilliant since Arteta yeah, yeah. came in as far yeah. as attitude goes. And his, his performances have been good, but he's, I still don't think he's good enough to play for Arsenal. So I'd, I'd have an upgrade on him. I I like that Decore Lee that you said. That yeah, Thomas yeah. Party yeah. is my favourite though. Uh, Thomas Party from Madrid. Yes, 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 yeah. Absolutely love that that guy. I would love to bring him in, but the, there's a few. I'd, I'd still, like I said, I can't move on from that so bios. I think he's got something. I really would like to hold on to him. Depends on how much we get charged from him, but. It ain't going to happen. I can't see it happening now. I can't see him getting a good run in the team enough to make a decision on him if if you're Arteta to buy him. But I think we've lost him and that's a shame because I do would like to have kept him. But yeah, up front, I think we're going to have a big choice to make, aren't we? Now, Aubameyang and Lacazette, I think it's Aubameyang contract up first. Yeah, I think but he's got a year. He's only got a year left, hasn't he, in the summer? A year and a half, I think he's got. He's got, yeah, in the summer though, he's got, he's got he's into his last year. Mm. And we can't, we've got to move on from giving away players for free, haven't we? So we've got to make a decision on him. If he refuses to sign a contract between now and the summer, what do you do? Sell him. You're going to have to, aren't you? You're going to have to sell him. And uh, I think the owners, I mean, not the owner, um, Raul Sanier, he he, uh, said that that. we ain't going to let players get um, into the last two years of their contract, but they've already gone, Mm. gone past that. So we've got to make a decision. If he ain't going to sign, we'd have to sell him. So that's going to be uh, a really interesting one. But anyway, we've been going for an hour. Well, obviously that doesn't count the first fucking video that we did. That we to come off. <laughs> so we'll have to start uh, wrapping up. But what? let's just have a quick one. We, we ain't got a crystal ball. But what, what's your realistic expectations for the rest of this season? What would you be really happy with? Um, Me personally, just going the going way the we're way going, going, just looking just for improvement for next season. season. I, don't I don't think we get top four. four. I don't think uh, we're good enough. Uh, as I, said, I don't so think we win the Europa League. League. Maybe, Maybe win the, win the FA, FA Cup. A bit of luck in, in the draw. But, uh, but yeah, uh, just yeah, to yeah, see him it's improving. Good couple of signings in the summer. And really go for top four and next season and who knows, you know. But I've been very encouraged with what Arteta has done. So, that's how do I look at it. Do you want to uh, qualify for next year's Europa League if we don't win it? No. Obviously. No. I've had, enough, had of enough of it. I don't think any of us do. I've really... I hate Con- that competition. Concentrate on concentrate playing, playing in, in, the in the Premier League, League one game, game a week and um, coaching coach the players, making them better. better. I, think, I think, you know, it'd be a good thing. I don't think it'd be a disaster if we're not in it. Can we afford? I don't know if we can afford it because we've, we've all seen those figures and we've uh, we've dropped a couple of hundred million pound behind Spurs. Well, so be so it. Whether we can afford, I don't know. But I'd love to be out of it if we don't. I'd love to finish outside the, those positions because I fucking hate the Europa League. <laughs> I really do. I can't stand it. It's like fucking the Aldi version of the Champions League, in it, and I don't want to be in it anymore. Guys, I've, I've got to get, get going, going, right? You know. Yeah, no worries. I was, we will we'll, we'll really appreciate you. Uh, Coming on, Lee. Really, no, really I've really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. Thanks for it. Really Sorry about it. the uh, the beginning. Don't know what. No, no, no worries. No, no. Technical, Technical issues. issues. You can't help yeah, that. Yeah, unfortunately so. But thanks ever so much. Hope you to uh, have you on again in the future. Take no care, problems, right? Ryan, see you later on, like you. Take care, mate. See you later on. Cheers, lads. Take care, mate. Take care, mate. Take care, mate. Now, Ryan, what are your thoughts and what are your expectations for the rest of the season? In terms of league, you know, take, sort of take it game by game. If by some, yeah, we're 11 points off Chelsea and four at the moment, but a lot of them teams above us have got to play each other whilst we're playing other teams below us. So if we can collect, start getting a lot of wins together, put a bit of pressure on they might they might back up a bit more. Because Chelsea, you've got to remember, Chelsea were walking at one point. We all thought Chelsea was Chelsea going to be fourth. Suddenly their, suddenly their form was literally like, Win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game. Literally, they're dropping points against teams. They're sort of dropping points too, basically, especially at home. I mean, I know they've got young players, young players but against 10 men Arsenal, Arsenal in the situation we were in at the time, and you can't kill them off, especially when you go 2 1 up in the 83rd, 83rd, 84th minute. 
I don't we think they they, 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 had, they they went on a, on a really poor run. I mean, I still think they've only had a couple of wins well, in yeah. the last eight, nine games. I think that's right. I think so. And, yeah. and they're still fourth. They're still fourth. And we are behind <laughs> Southampton. We're behind Sheffield United, which, I, you know, I ain't never going to knock Sheffield United. I really rate, I rate that. Sure. But, League but, one, two, but, it ain't going to stay like that, mate. And I can seriously see it being completely the opposite of the Emery reign, whereby he started off really well and then ended up like a, a train wreck. I think mm. it's, we started off this season like a train wreck. I can see us ending up going, you know, finishing the season really strongly and going on a really good run. And I can see us smashing the team soon. Mm. Four, five, nil. I really mm. can. I think we're that close, genuinely, it's to crazy. actually having it all click. And I'm not crazy. saying that I and think it's... here and now that we're going to finish in the top four. Although, you know, I put that bet on not because I just, <laughs> just couldn't resist it. Oh, you've got my but I, I, I seriously, I seriously cannot rule it out because of how shit everyone else is as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think that we are out of the mini league that we're in. I think that we've got the most bright, immediate future. I think we're more of a, of a chance to be on the up than Spurs, than Chelsea, than Wolves because of the size of their squad. However, our squad is getting a little bit thin because of the injuries we've been suffering. Um, but Wolves are, I think, out of the lot of them, are our biggest threat, if I'm honest. Um, I'm counting Leicester to be finishing within the top four. However, they ain't looking great recently. They, yeah, they're, they're, cool. they're suffering and they got knocked out of the semi-final yesterday. That's going to take the wind out of their sails and they've been on a bad run. But I've actually counted them being in the top four. So I ain't right, I can't write it off. I can physically just can't write it off, although it's very, very unlikely. And, I'm, you know, people think that I'm mad. But I, I, I think there's still a chance, mate. I really do. I was going to say that there's a chance because of how bad the other teams around us are at the moment. If we could put a bunch of games together and put more pressure, they, they could back a little bit more. You never, you never know. Football's a, football's a funny game. I mean, yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool just got one the other part of the way. So. Have they? Well, Liverpool. Do you know what, as well? Last, I put this on Twitter not long ago. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to dare knock Liverpool because of that if anyone can say how good they are. However, I don't think they're... <laughs> They haven't been amazing, 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 amazing okay. in form. And they've been That's lucky true. in a lot of their games. And I think that they, the problem is with them, as with a lot of the great teams in the in the past, throughout history, a lot of, of the great teams have had this, whereby they go into a game and their opponent already thinks they're beaten. Hmm. They, you how many how often do you hear it in the in the press? Oh, it's a buy because they've got Liverpool this week or whatever, or they've got Man City this week, so they're not going to expect anything from that. So we've, uh, you know, it, it's a buy basically, and I think a lot of the teams go into those games with with that kind of attitude, and Liverpool win a lot of their games because of that. They don't even have to play fantastically well; they will just the other team will just roll over, expecting to lose. And that is, that is so frustrating. And that's why I was gutted with when Wolves went up against them. Was it last mm. weekend or the weekend before? Yeah, Wolves could have won week. that game easy if they'd have taken some more of their chances. And um, it's frustrating. What do you think? I'd like to have a show of hands from everyone that's watching. I really would. Because I want to know what people think about this um, our Invincibles record and our Golden Premier League trophy and whether people actually care about Liverpool getting it or not. What do you think? What what, what are your honest thoughts about it? Do you... up, to, up to Sunday, I was like, if it happens, it happens. But then when, when Klopp said what he said about not bothering to for a replay, because it's a, it's a winter break for Liverpool, I'm, I'm not turning up. My first team ain't turning up. We ain't I hate well. that. Disrespect, hate it. I, want, I, don't, I, don't, I really want to lose now before the before, 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 before. that is such arrogance. I, I hate it. it, and that's do you Imagine know who I feel not. sorry for? Is is Shrewsbury, yeah, yeah. that's so disrespectful to Shrewsbury. 
I mean, he so, in my opinion, he so disrespectful in the first place with the start of the level he put out. If he really wanted to, if he wanted to avoid the replay, you put your, you put your big you put your strong, team, team, out, your strong team out, you killed the game, you bring them off. Bring them off. Oh, oh, no, and no, he's no, having a pissy fit over it. But the FA have allowed him to say what he said, they're not held him accountable. I mean, Southampton and Tottenham, they're in the same situation, they've got to play each other, they went winter break. Is he the manager or owner complaining? No, they took it on with it. But he's making excuses up now because he's got a bit of a backlash from a few people. It's ridiculous. I know. It's, it's, it's based on that. I now want them to lose. They've really... I mean, I've always hated Liverpool anyway. I mean, it goes back to the 80s and you know, I always hated them. But they've gone down even more in my... Because I actually was quite respected them this mm. last couple of seasons because of what they've done. You, just, you physically can't do anything but respect what they've done. Mm. But they've really lost all that, and uh, a lot of my admiration because of this FA Cup situation, I, I, I just think it's so disrespectful, it's unbelievable. Uh, I like to be a traditionalist when it comes to the FA Cup. I would have... Um, I the only thing I, w- I would say is I would actually support scrapping the replays after the fourth, mm. well, so maybe even the third round. I think that's a little bit pointless nowadays but um especially especially in the December you got one in the game in December and in literally New Year's Day in the first game first match day weekend you've got an FA Cup match. I know. There's a lot of games and in literally a couple weeks later you've got the fourth round. So yeah. The have the match if it's a draw straight straight no extra time just go straight penalties. I know. Well I do like the fact that well, I can't say that this this winter break that's coming up. I actually don't looking forward. To it. I don't think it's a good idea because I love football and I'm going to miss it for two weeks. If I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> However, there's one there was one of the games that was between Christmas and New Year, which I think was uh, maybe I think the 29th. I think it was on oh, yeah, December the 29th. That game could quite easily have gone right into the middle of this two two weeks. Just had the mm. one game. And that would have eased that the spread out this congestion and it would have taken away so many injuries because that week, I think it was, or the week after, uh, there was 50 odd injuries, serious injuries mm. um, in the Premier League, 50. And I think that was purely down to the overplaying during that Christmas period. I love the Christmas period again and it's special across the world. That's what makes us special. Oh, it's too, it's too and I, but that was one game too many for me and I think if they remove that, to this, within this sort of supposed winter break, which isn't even a winter break anyway, um, then I think that would have been sensible personally. But um, I I hate the dis- disrespect of the FA Cup. I remember being a kid and being so excited about the FA Cup. But it was more, much more important when I was a kid. The FA Cup was well above the league. I know it's not the case now; it, it never will be. But, but imagine, it got imagine, a special imagine, place imagine, in my heart then. Imagine, Sorry, imagine that when we. Back in the, the, uh, the, 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 the 90s and the mid 90s into the noughties, if a, a, a circus on a finger got a replay, not, not bothered. Go, go, go for the Tottenham, but nah. nah, nah. nah. Vince Paul Stevens, we've got, we've got a replay, not Vince Paul Stevens, I don't think we did, but we had. And Wenger went, nah. The backlash you would have got. Mate, do you remember when Man United got taken out of the FA Cup that one year? They asked for it because of the World Club Cup. Yeah. And I mean, they, the, the backlash was horrific, mm. but that that was the start of the disrespect, and mm. it, it it lost its credibility from from that moment on. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's have a look at this. Um, some of the comments about my question just a few minutes ago. Tony Turner, I don't see Liverpool losing. The league is so weak this year. There is ten points between fourth and fourteenth currently. Uh, the one thing I'm holding out for, and I don't disagree with you, Tony, but the one thing I'm holding out for is that Liverpool will start to take that for granted. They will actually start believing that themselves. And then one day, they will come unstuck against a, a team like a Palace, who turned over Man City last year, nearly derailed their title hopes. I'm just ho- holding out that Liverpool will start to believe their own hype that they are going to go unbeaten mm. and they will disrespect the team one week and uh, and get turned over unexpectedly. 
fingers crossed, eh? Yeah. But trace, 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 trace wait until twenty twenty two, says Tony again. When we get a break from from yeah. November to New Year's because of the World Cup. Oh yeah, God, yeah. what do you have to say that for, Tony? Yeah, that that's going to that's piss me off again that. even more. I got, the thought of a winter World Cup is ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely, ridiculous. It's never gone to Qatar in the first place. What? It was meant to be a summer. It was meant to be given to him as a summer World Cup, not our summer. And then, oh no, it's going to be too hot, so we'll move it to the winter. What a load. No, no, if you have done your checks and then it's too hot for any human to play at that level, whoever came to that can give it to them. I know. Oh, no, Do you know what I thought? Money, this is money, like, money. this is um, really random, all right? But this is the way my my mind works when I'm at work. Sometimes it just wanders off, and it comes up with these stupid. I don't know where it comes from. But <clears throat> when when you're a kid, I've got three, you know, young boys that all play football, and when you're, um, I don't know, if you're around the sort of the ten, eleven mark, in the in the summer, there's these competitions that the kids play. And it, it's all done like on, a, I don't know, maybe a thir last 32. And they're, they're five aside and they are, I think it's either seven, eight, maybe ten minutes a half. And they, it, it's a mini league. It's like a Champions League, basically. And it mm. all gets done within a day. And uh, it's ten minutes each way, like I say, it's five aside. Wouldn't you love to have like a, a worldwide professional football tournament where specific teams like a you know league teams like you know an Arsenal Man United and play teams from around the world sent a five side team to have a one day tournament like that where they just hang around they always that five side they uh, it's a quick league uh, situation and then it goes into a knockout and, um, and they're all, all all hanging around waiting not drinking their drink because you can pretty much go from one game to another straight away and you're hanging, you're there, and it all gets done within a day. And I mean, I just started thinking, having a professional one of those, and it could even be, you could have like a a, a, a veterans one, mm. <laughs> and you can have like an up to date one. And like yeah. Arsenal can send, you know, their best one. Neymar. And it's like the um, I can't remember what they call it in this this year's FIFA uh, game. Is um, there's, there's a competition like that in FIFA, isn't there? Like a, a oh, I don't know about yeah, but that I mean that that would be amazing, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> and definitely. it goes it goes on pretty much for the whole day. Mm. Anyway, that's my, that's the way my mind my mind wanders whilst I'm at work, goes off and, and thinks about things like that on a tangent. But uh, yeah, so I think we'll uh, leave it there then. So thanks ever so much, you guys, for watching. Thanks for those that are listening on audio uh, after the event. Please um, subscribe and hit the notification button on YouTube Welcome. so you don't miss these uh, coming up every week. And please subscribe to the Mr. Arsenal channel uh, that Ryan is the host of, which is also fantastic. Um, anyone coming up guest-wise that you want to plug, Ryan? Uh, I'll just, I'll just I'll sort just out. Sort We've got James, James coming on on Sunday. On Sunday. Glenn's, Glenn's waiting to confirm. Um, um, uh, so that's yeah, that's on Sunday. Just going from there, basically. And hopefully, yeah. get back on soon when things come down. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks, Tony. Thanks, Stan. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, everyone that's watching. It's been fantastic in the uh, the chat box today. I've really, really enjoyed keeping yeah. in touch with that. I'm really sorry yeah. for. <laughs> the earlier show problems that we had. I still don't know what's going on. I'm still doing this without my headphones because it's not working. So um, I hope my audio's come out okay um, that, and you can all hear me all right. So yeah, apologies for the the echoing and everything earlier on. I do not know what was going on there. Um, no, totally by the way, he, he's got the he's name, name for that, for that thing we were talking about, Volta. Volta, that's it. Yes, thanks, Tony. Yes, I really enjoy playing that with the kids. Um, it's the only way I can get a possible chance of beating my kids <laughs> at a game of FIFA because I get slaughtered. Um, I even get slaughtered in that, but sometimes you can get fluky goals where it bounces off the hoardings and everything and goes in when you're not actually expecting it. But 
yeah so thanks a lot anyway guys for watching make sure you tune in next week always a pleasure and thanks to you Ryan you're thanks you're to Glenn sorry you had to go off Glenn and thanks ever so much to lead judges really appreciate it so uh, look forward to speaking to you all soon and come on you gunners good luck for Burnley on Sunday <laughs>